This is Derek from Tech Connection, and I'm back with another job. This time, we're under the gun for time, so we're going to build this Cat6 network in one sitting. Let's get to work. This is one of those businesses where cars roll into a garage, get worked on, and roll out again. This business is only going to be here a short time, 24 months. Then the building is going to be torn down and replaced with skyscrapers. Hey, I guess we need a few more of those. Anyway, we're going to work as fast as we can. In order to get done in a single day, we've brought six boxes so that it will only take us three pulls to get all the wires where we need them to be. While Jeff is working on getting those wires laid out, I'm going to start clearing this backboard and installing the rack. The telephone company has left a smart jack in our way on the backboard. I'm going to cut this real quick and toss it. You're supposed to save them, so if you come across one of these, set it aside so that the telephone company can retrieve it. For the rack, we're using an ICC brand open frame style. It's actually two unconnected pieces that need to be mounted individually. I've only used this once before, and I'm actually a little rusty on how it goes on the wall. So I'm just going to time lapse, and you can see me level this out and get it on the wall with a little assistance from Jeff. Whenever you need to work fast, be sure to bring some friends along with you. And before you get started and step in on each other, split up your duties accordingly so that you can work efficiently. While I'm working on the rack, Jeff will be lengthening out all the Cat 6 and getting them more or less into the position where we need them to be. I realize this is upside down. Don't worry, there's a sticker in the box so that we can put it right side up again. As per usual, I'm going to use the click-in style patch panel. A single 24 port one will do the job for this particular business. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I like to use these because you can use the all-in-one crimping tool to get these on very quickly. I like to put it at the top of my rack and keep things nice and organized. With the rack roughed in for cable terminations, I can now turn my attention to the J-hooks. J-hooks are cable supports that are screwed into either studs or wooden joists, and then we can lay the cables in their little track. Jeff will have installed a couple of these on the exterior wooden structure of this garage. What he's doing is using the J-hooks to support the cable while he lays it out and tries to get the length correct. As we progress, we will add more J-hooks after the fact in order to tighten this up. But just for running and lengthening out and trying to rough these cables into position, a couple of J-hooks is all we need. There's our old friend from the previous videos, the Pulling Pal. With a Pulling Pal and a couple of judiciously spaced J-hooks, one person can easily pull all of these Cat 6 and length them out without any assistance. While Jeff tightens up all of the J-hook slack, it will be my job to bring the Cat 6 extents to the outlets. I'm going to use some zip ties to get down the corner of the drywall. Remember that zip ties are there for structural support and strain relief only. You're not supposed to be crushing your cable with all your might whenever you apply these. Just use them to hold the cables in position, nothing more. I had to drill a hole in order to get these cables into that track. But you guys know that I don't like jagged holes, and it doesn't matter if they're tearing this building down in 24 months or not. We got to do a good job here. So grommets it is. I think that these look a lot more professional, and if it should come to pass that this place is still standing after 24 months, maybe five years from now, we'll be glad that we did a good job. For the remainder of the cables, I'm able to just cut an outlet in the wall. Everything is hollow here in this building, it turns out, so it's a pretty simple matter to cut out a square and attach a low voltage mount. This way I can just make a regular data outlet in the wall. In order to terminate my wires, I'm going to be using these keystones here. I like this particular brand because they're easy to lay in at their 45 degree angle of these teeth. So once I've got the wire stripped, it's pretty easy to get everything in position. And then once that is done, the all-in-one tool makes terminating this an absolute cinch. I can get all of these done in just a few minutes. Of course, it's good practice to make sure that there aren't any screw-ups, so be sure to eyeball it. 
While I was terminating the outlets, Jeff was working back at the rack terminating the patch panel. He was able to do it so quickly, I couldn't even get back with my camera in time to film him doing it. So this is the finished product here. The next item I'm going to install in the rack will be the cable manager. As you know from my previous videos, I really like the neat patch series, so that is what I'm going to install right here. This is a 1U version, and it's meant for a 24-port patch panel. After the cable manager will come the switch. In order to do this one-handed, I'm going to use a tip that a YouTuber gave me in an earlier video in the comments. If you install two screws, partially extended, just below the rack unit where you intend to put your equipment, you can let the weight of your equipment rest on those screws. Now I can do this one-handed while I film, no problem. After the switch is installed, I like to put in the rack shelf. There's nothing really fancy going on here, it's just a shelf. But keep in mind that I'm deliberately installing it with the lip facing down. This does waste one rack unit of space, so if you're feeling a little tight or you have tall equipment that you need to mount, you might want to flip this over instead of the way that I am doing it. Every good network should have a UPS on it, and that is what the shelf will be supporting, is this very simple 1000VA UPS that will help us survive brownouts without any of the equipment rebooting suddenly. Okay, we're just about done. Now we've got our service loop rolled up, we've got the UPS and the switch online, and all we need is the computer guys to show up with their firewall and their modem and assorted other goodies. The internet connection's been brought in. It's right here on the side of the building. They've got it hanging, just waiting for the computer guys. And as for us, it's time for us to leave. We're going to make one last pass where we test everything with our fluke and apply the labels. And then we're gonna bail out and head to the next job. I hope this has been interesting for you. And if you appreciate this video, I've got a lot more coming. I'll see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that video. Uh, I just want to take a moment and say thank you. I actually got a monetization, like ad revenue check for the first time. So uh, I'm grateful for all your support. And I just want to let you know that I will be buying a microphone first thing. Uh, sorry to put you through that without having it this entire time. Uh, that's the first thing we're going to do. And uh, even if you don't want to uh, subscribe or like, I've got, gotten a lot out of this channel just making these videos, and I really appreciate everyone's support. I've learned a lot about my own business and my own networking skills in the process, and I've been working to improve them to make the videos more interesting for you. So uh, again, thank you for the subscriptions and all the support. It means a lot to me. Uh, until the next one, happy network building. I'll see you again soon.